shot callers, havoc makers. Yes. Your thoughts on uh, who those guys are after Saturday? You know, it's it's a revolving door, man. It's a competition every single day. So we uh, we do a lot of uh, charting of um, causing havoc, having um, you know plays that disrupt the offense, sacks, TFLs, interceptions, PBUs, uh, batted balls, and um, it's a constant competition that the guys have done a really good job embracing. So. Um, you know, that's, it's always uh, changing, and um, it's really cool to see these guys compete um, and get after the ball. DJ has a huge day on Saturday. What had he showed you of the prior 13 practice? Was it ever, was that actually indicative of what he's shown the last month, or was that just the biggest day after building up to that point? Yeah, it's re it really, um, I think he's a, he's a special individual because um, he's, he's his, uh, hardest, his own hardest critic. So he's constantly... Um, you know, trying to find ways, um, study the game. He's a guy that's really active, hitting me up um, and um, putting in the extra work of um, what it takes, you know, to try to catch the edge. And so, um, you know, obviously him playing a lot more offense and tight end, I think uh, he felt a little behind, you know, in the beginning. So um, he's done a nice job progressing. And um, uh, like you saw, you know, there's flashes of greatness there. So he knows he still has some things to go get better at, and he will. And uh, we're going to attack that uh, together. But I'm really excited about the future with him. What do you think? The top guy on that list this spring. What's that? Who was the top guy on the list for, for spring? The top guy for creating the the havoc and, and all those categories That's you a listed good off. Question. We, we'd have to do an accumulative, um, you know, ending of spring, and then maybe within the uh, NCAA rules, of course, there could be a prize. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure. We really, uh, day by day, we chart it, you know, and it's kind of a daily competition. So um, I'm not sure as far as the accumulative winner, but we should probably go look at that. Braden's and I'll get back to you. Braden Switzen had a big day the other day. He had two or three would-be sacks. Can you speak to his like, growth and his, uh, like how, what you expect to see from him this season? Yeah, I think um, he's another guy that's, that's attacked the process the right way. Um, he's hungry to improve. Um, he knows that there's plenty of room for improvement. Um, I think one one challenge to him is, um, you know, he, at one point he was, um, I think he was 280 pounds at one point in his career here, and then he dropped way down, and he's uh, he's progressing the right way. So I think as he packs on some good muscle weight um, and adapts to that weight, you know, he's going to get uh, more and more comfortable of setting the edge and, and copping some havoc for us. Where does he fit positionally? Is he outside linebacker, defensive end? Hybrid, both? Yeah, we, we run a really a versatile um, system. So, you know, a lot of times he's he's gonna he's gonna play what looks like a defensive end, and he's also gonna be an outside backer for us, depending on what package we're in. Um, so, you know, I think he's he's embraced that. Um, he's done a real nice job mentally as well, um, as we as we tax him, you know, with a, some of the volume of our defense. Can you speak to just the development of the defensive line? You had some guys who had a lot of starts in their careers here not take part much in spring ball and just how long far along has this group come without them and just what will it be like getting them back in the fall yeah i think it was, it was a great opportunity for guys you know with with uh keon being out and um, popo and brandon a um, couple others so some some guys got some really cool opportunities to um you know attempt to master their craft that, that they might have got not gotten as many uh opportunities in the past you know so I think Coach uh, Tuioti has, has um, done a kick-ass job of um, really developing that, that group. Um, a guy like Trevin, you know, really stood out where the beginning of spring, you compare that to, you know, even the scrimmage and just our last week, um, I think he's really progressed. He's, he's a guy that, um, you know, we want to count on. Um, and, and that's among some other guys, you know, a guy like a newcomer, Taki, that's made an impact inside. Um, you know, I think these guys know we're, we're certainly not where we want to be, um, but we're definitely headed in the right direction. When Jared Greenfield rejoins the program and then is obviously earning his way back in a way, but has the kind of spring game that he does, was that also was that indicative of like the, the message he's trying to send and trying to rejoin you guys and put himself in the best position to, to play for you, be a contributor, get back in the good graces? Yeah, we're, we're pumped to have him and, um, you know, demand a lot out of him, you know, and, and um, he's really uh, responded the right way. You know, um, I don't I don't really know all the details of uh, what occurred in the past. And um, it, as long as they're, um, you know, not uh, representing our program the wrong way, you know, that that has nothing to do with us. So he's had a, he's had a, a, a clean start and he's embraced that and uh, he's responded to the challenge well. And he knows um, we're going to coach him hard and um, 
we've kind of tested him a little early on to see how he responds. And he's done a nice job doing that. So I'd love to see him, you know, be in the position to uh, compete and contribute for us. How much more install is there to go through uh, throughout the summer months? You know, we really um, we try to cycle through um, the ma the majority of our install. We like to give it to them. You know, you got a limited time with them before we get started, and it's really a focus of implementing the culture and focusing on the strength and conditioning. But now we are allowed to to do um, a little football before spring ball. What we try to do is cycle through, so a little bit of starting over in spring ball and progressing to the end again, and then we'll continue that process. So. Um, with goals of guys making an immediate impact early in their career. That's been a really cool recipe for us to do it that way. And then, you know, veterans that go through maybe a day one call again, um, you know, we're not going to coach them the same, but we might focus on the same call, for example, and give the veterans um, variables within the formations and kind of more day one stuff as other newcomers come along, like the, the kids that will be joining us around June 18th. Coach Lanning said he hasn't seen another defensive coach like put such an emphasis on like on turnovers and interceptions, things like that. And I know there was three interceptions on uh, Saturday. Like, what was your what was your view from the sideline from that? Like, how did you see your players perform? I mean, that, that's the expectation. You know, it's no secret. Um, if we can uh, get the ball back for the offense, it's going to increase our chances to win. So I don't know why we wouldn't uh, put a huge uh, premium on that. You know, so um, there's a there's a 30 year NFL study. Um, that that um, really personifies that. So, um, you know, if I knew we were going to call a specific call and I could call that 40 times and that would equal a 67% chance to win, then I would probably call it even more than that, right? But that we all know that's not the case. So um, this is, you know, it's a proven fact that if we can be a, a plus one or plus two or plus three ratio um, in the, in the uh, turnover stat, you know, we, we greatly increase our chances to win. So that's what we're going to do. And um, we're going to constantly reinforce that, and that's part of our defensive culture is to get the ball out. So what do you want to – what do you, what do you – Chuck, going to the secondary coach, a couple of defensive backs had some strong days in the spring game. H how do you kind of uh, approach towing that fine line of being aggressive and jamming a guy at the line of scrimmage and, and maybe giving some space when there's some speedy guys? Um, we probably really don't um, walk the fine line. You know, we, we want to be extremely aggressive and confrontational. Um, we want to play press coverage. We want to um, operate out of man match quarters, um, you know, our Ripley's match system and cover three, um, and then complement that as well with some zone. So, and try to do our best to, you know, mix up things, offer disguises, and then pressure off those looks as well. So, you know, we, we want to be really aggressive. You know, that's, that's the system I come from and I believe in, Coach Landing as well. And um, we really want to be the dictator at the end of the day. So. Um, we're we're going to, you know, constantly try to challenge our players to embrace that and, um, you know, really uh, function with the, the rush and coverage working together. What do you want um, as far as like what's the what's next for you the next few months and what do you want to see from your players during this time? It's away? a cool looking hat, man. Well, thank it's you. Like, reminds me of one of our blitzes. We should... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> uh, what what does the post spring look like for you, and what do you want to see from your players? Uh, yeah, we, we really want to focus um, target you know an individual individual development um, piece to each guy. So I think you know over my career when we when we try to challenge the guys, you know we we all could myself included could get better at a lot of things, you know. So um, if you pick out seven of them, you know sometimes you 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 kind of you know, become a jack of all trades and a master of none. We're really not trying to do that. So we're going to really target, you know, one thing. So every single player is going to come into every coach and we're going to have, you know, just one thing and start it there. You know, that might be how somebody finishes. That might be um, my eye control and discipline within man coverage as a defensive back. That might be, um, you know, uh, the timing of my pressures as an inside backer. You know, there's, there's very various things we can focus on and then give them a plan of action of how I can improve that. Once that starts to get improved, now we can go on to the next thing. Back to Trevor. Off season, part of the recruiting at a calendar at this time of year, but the satellite camp element exploded after uh, when you moved on to the NFL. Mm -hmm. What's gonna be your sales pitch on the recruiting trail here? And then what are you looking to identify in those camps that you guys will be going to? Yeah, you know, as far as a sales pitch, I mean, that's one of the main reasons I'm here. There's not, you know, you don't have to be a, a car salesman to, to you know, um, 
represent this place and understand how special it is, you know. So you're at a place where you can um, you, you can consistently compete for a national title. You're at least in position that you possibly can. Um, you're at a place where you're going to consistently uh, coach top 10 picks, and you're at a place that's um, arguably connected better than any other program in the world when it comes to the relationships, the Nike relationships, the alumni association that's a part of this place. So I think the place more so um, sells itself. Um, as far as the camps, um, you know, I've been in the National Football League for the last three years, and um, I'm going to have to be guided on as far as the camps and where we're going. And um, but um, we'll probably end up where some of the best prospects are. Back to Trevin, I was just going to ask, what is his ceiling as a player? He's a player that's gained a lot of weight since he's gotten here and mm -hmm. transformed his body, played different positions, and, and what does he need to do to reach that? Well, I, I think um, you know our, our system really benefits, if you look at the history of um, not just the Alabama blueprint, but even before that, um, uh, University of Washington and back to Cal with Cameron Jordan and Tyson Alualu, and we really function and, and like a um, a versatile but bigger, stronger um, defensive end type guy, outside backer guy. That's you know you, the history of what I've coached over the years. So Trevin has, has um, answered that well. Um, he's fine-tuned his body, and I think he's more and more comfortable now, and, and he's really improved. I mean, I think the, the strength staff and the medical staff, Chief, and all of them have done a great job too. Like his uh, balance and body control, his change of direction, um, you know, he's improved, um, and, and, it, and that's, you know, shown out on the field. I'm curious, last question. With Justin Flo, I know he's only been up and running for a little bit, but what are your kind of initial thoughts working with him? Yeah, well, I'm excited, man. I know he is, and I am too, and um, we've, we tried our best to, to um, slowly progress him, but there, there's not really uh, that gear in his body. So we did a few walkthroughs, and, you know, they turned into full speed for him, so we had to slow him down. and. Um, but I'd much rather be coaching a guy um, that, you know, you got to ask him to slow down than, rather than have to constantly um, encourage him to speed up.